Sorry. I'm used to being loud enough. I don't have to have a mic. I got you. So uh, I want to welcome everybody here. Um, welcome to Kentucky. As I said earlier, we're going to be passing out a little bit of bourbon. I'm going to talk a little bit about how to sip that and enjoy it. So uh, keep, keep that in mind. You don't have to participate, but I do ask if you do participate, please be 21 or older. All right. Uh, the talk today is they put their DMZ in the cloud, right? Now, I want you to think about that just for a minute. Think about what, uh, what that means to you, the cloud. Every time we hear the cloud, we think, oh, it's weak. It's, you know, it's, it's not as secure as inside. So today, I'm going to challenge that a little bit. And I want you to think about it, especially from a pen test perspective. So uh, this is me. Um, I've been uh, playing with social engineering a little bit. If you go out and check out Dr. Hacks, you'll notice that uh, it's not my picture that's out there. Uh, when I went out to uh, some of the other cons, it's amazing how many people will uh, invite me out to dinner. And I show up. <laughs> I said, Dude, I got you. So uh, let's have some fun with it. Uh, I tinker and I break things and I ask what if, right? So for the past, oh, I'm going to say 20, you know, that's not true. For 40 years, I've been breaking stuff and trying to see how it works. It's just in my DNA. So uh, some of the things I have been doing for the past 16 years, I've been working at uh, a fairly large corporation, and I've had an opportunity to work with some really talented people. And I've put together some teams, and those teams have taught me a lot of things, uh, especially with pen testing, working with the SOC, working against each other, making it better for the company. But no matter how good we are, we keep running into problems. And part of that problem is the design of our networks, the way that things are laid out. And uh, what I would tell you is, as we continue on through this, that is a fundamental problem that's got to change. Otherwise, we're going to have the same problems 40 years from now. So let's look at this a little bit. Um, I did tell you we're going to do some sipping of some Kentucky Creek water. So we'll do that here in a little while. Uh, again, this is tradition that I've had not to, uh, you know, we've done it a couple of different times. It seems to work well. So I appreciate the participation in that. All right, so what I'm going to talk about is a DMZ as a service. And this is a little different. You, you've probably heard of SaaS as a service and all these other things. But the model I'm going to talk about today is a little bit different. Uh, the DMZ as a service takes a certain portion of the DMZ and puts it in the cloud, but it leaves other products in other places. And you're going to kind of get a picture of it here in just a second. I uh, want to talk about if it's easy, you know, is it easy to break into it? Or is it going to be disruptive to pen testing? So traditionally what you have, you, you've got this uh, three-tier design, right? Everybody's familiar with three-tier design? The three-tier design, you got the outside, they're trying to get in, and you've got your end user down here on the end. Uh, basically, we do recon on this, we see the DMZ, we see the IP addresses, we run scans, we see vulnerabilities, we try to hack in, we see uh, URLs, and we try to get into their website, right? Uh, if all of that fails, we figure out the network that the user's on, try to fish the user, and then from getting on the network with the user, we come in that way. And that's kind of what it really looks like, right? You got Swiss cheese in there, right? And, and that Swiss cheese, when you think about that, uh, it, it makes you, I mean, we all laugh, right? Who in here thinks that this is wrong? Am I, am I right? Yeah. So what I would ask you is why do we keep doing the same thing? You know, why do we keep doing the same thing? This is the new model. 
And I want to talk a little bit about how this really functions. I'm going to take the uh, original idea that when I would go to Acme, on, on the other screens I had Acme.com. When you go to Acme.com, it took you right straight into my DMZ. Well, guess what? Now you're already inside my network. In this model, I'm going to take you to a cloud DMZ. You're not even in my network. You're in a cloud DMZ that I have a provider for. I can be uh, somebody that's got something in Amazon, somebody that's got something in an internal uh, corporation. Think about uh, something like SharePoint. Oh, good Lord, never share SharePoint out to anybody in the world, right? But what if I could? Would that enable us? Would that help us out in business? So, you know, let's think about what that might do. So I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to dual authenticate, you know, two-factor. I'm going to dual authenticate my user. They're going to go to this cloud DMZ. They're going to type in the normal URL for my company. They're going to go to this cloud DMZ. They don't know anything's different, right? DNS records gotten changed. They don't know it. They don't care. When they authenticate, they're now an authenticated user on this particular service. If they don't authenticate, what happens? Exactly. So before you get to the URL at all, before you see the application at all, what do you have to do? Authenticate. Now, here's the real catch. I've got a piece of equipment setting inside my uh, system, inside my network, that does one thing. It talks out to the cloud DMZ as a service. It doesn't, it does not allow inbound traffic. Think about that for a minute. No inbound traffic. It only allows outbound. Now once a session is created, it allows it there. But the session has to be created first. Okay? What happens in this situation, the authenticated user meets a session that's already looking for somebody, and they get connected in the DMZ as a service. Okay? Once that happens, then the acme.com URL router will actually route them to my acme.com server. I can put this anywhere. Again, Amazon, Azure, inside my corporate uh, facilities. Whoops, a little too far on that one. There we go. Now, what I really want to pay attention to here is the DMZ as a service, they can't get through my firewall. I have put up firewall deny all on the outside. Okay, You can't get into me. I'm only talking out. Second portion of this is if I tried to, as a user, go directly to this, I can't do it because there's nothing facing outwardly here. On my web application, my application itself, my application, does it look like it's talking directly to the Internet? No. It's only talking to this router thing, right? Well, let's say that router thing has a authenticated, right? It has an authenticated session back to the uh, DMZ as a service. Now, it's mutually authenticated, which means coming from one side and going to the other, they know each other, right? So it's not like I can do a man in the middle on this one. And just kind of let that sink in. Down at the bottom, you're going to notice my web server can't talk out directly. My uh, pen tester can't break in directly. So they're going to have to do some things that's pretty complicated here, not like it is today. Now, let's recap this just real quick. How many of you know what a statement of work is? Yeah? Statement of work when you're doing multiple parties. How complicated is that? Is that easy? Yeah, it gets pretty complicated. So I just made your life as a pen tester a lot rougher. 
When I start looking at recon, and I start looking at Acme Company, what's my firewall at Acme Company look like? Brick. It's a brick. You don't see anything now. We drop on down to the authentication. Uh, I got multi-factor on my end user. I've got mutual authentication coming in from my company out to the DMZ. So breaking into that's going to be a little challenging. It's going to limit lateral movement drastically because my end users are no longer on my network. They're outside. They're coming from outside. There are problems with this. Don't get me wrong. So, Shodan, we talked about this. Just to recap, nothing's going to make it in from the outside. Yeah, let, let's say you can find the login page. Again, somehow or another, you crack some passwords, but I'm two factor. Now you got to figure out how to break the two factor. Once I get past the two-factor, I'm only going to be able to obtain access to one URL. In the past, if you got on a box, what could you do? You'd go all over the place, right? Now you're going to have to hack the web application itself and figure out a way to break into the box from the web app. Just throwing it out there, okay? So I'm throwing up a bunch of barriers here. You know what that's called? Defense in depth. This is something that we've really gotten away from. Uh, this pattern hasn't been really available uh, from what I've seen. I've been doing this a long time, and right now the company I work with, I, I watch for their um, remote connectivity. I watch out for vendors, watch out for other companies as we outsource maybe, uh, uh, well, basically as we outsource roles. Uh, let's say 1,700 roles. Uh, I got to have all those folks coming in to work on my applications. Well, guess what? This would be a pretty easy way to set them up. Do I have to have a VPN? Oh, I eliminated that. Hmm. So I just put some folks out of a job, unfortunately. But they got some other stuff they can work on. I, I eliminated a bunch of firewall rules, didn't I? How often do I have to change firewall rules on this thing? <laughs> wow, daggone. It's a, good mo it's, a good, it's a good model, right? So keep in mind, with that, I'm, I don't know if you can read that very well. What I want you to think about when you read this <laughs> is this is you if you don't pay attention to this kind of a model coming up, right? I used to be able to do all this stuff, but now we got too many security protections, right? That's going to be us if we don't watch out for these models. They're disruptive. It's kind of like what happened to uh, Uber and the taxi service. It's kind of like what happened to uh, Blockbuster, right? What happened to Blockbuster with Netflix, you know, bye-bye for the most part. This is what I want you to be thinking about. Now, I'm not going to tell you that all corporations and all little companies are going to move this model real quick. But what I am going to tell you is, this exists. Um, whoops, sorry. Right here. Uh, the company that actually came up, this is a working model, so I'm not telling you about some pie in the sky, this might work. This is real. Uh, there's a company that came out with this, uh, Soho. Uh, Soha, I keep doing that wrong. Soha. Uh, they came out with this idea another large corporation that you may be familiar with, Akamai, they saw this solution and went, we got to have that. And what I'm telling you today is watch out for this. This model, if it works and if it catches on, it's going to change the way we have to do our jobs. And as we continue to go to the cloud, as we continue to outsource, as we continue to do, do these types of things within IT, within businesses, this is what you're going to be facing. Okay? So, to celebrate the fact that you are now aware of this, I'm going to ask you a question. If you would, lift up your cups. And I don't want you to throw them back, 
But I want you to get to where you can just get the bourbon, just right. You can smell it, yeah. Smell of it. This is something called I.W. Harper. I don't know if you guys have ever had it or not. But uh, just kind of sip it just a little. Don't, don't, you know, just get a little taste. Feel that burn. Not only do you feel that burn, but you can taste some different flavors. Uh, you can make that last the rest of the afternoon if you want to. Or you can just toss it back. It won't do much for you. But uh, I just want to thank you guys for taking time to come in here. I want to thank you for the time that uh, the guys put together for DerbyCon. Um, this makes my sixth DerbyCon. I've been out for a couple of years. Okay, it just keeps getting better and better. So I appreciate you guys for uh, coming in today. And I'll leave you with this one thing. Uh, I'm an eternal security soldier. You may not understand what that means right now, but my question, and I'll leave you with this if you've got any questions, what are you going to be doing in a thousand years? Okay? That's something I ponder from time to time. All right? And I'm serious. What are you going to be doing in a thousand years from now? Okay? With that, do you have any questions about the solution or about the... Uh... Go right ahead. Right now, to my knowledge, Akamai is the only company that has the ability on this, which I think there has to be some way for others to figure this out too. And again, uh, if, you, if you can think of a mom and pop shop or a new startup, if they could go to a company and say, here, take care of my DMZ, take care of my authentication. Oh, there's a bunch of companies that do that today. But the catch is that URL router that they have that is encrypted in the way it does mutual authentication. That, that's the real key. Yeah, if you could figure out how to do that, it, 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 it would be a challenge. Is it possible to dock the DMZ as a service? So, I'm sorry? All right. Uh, can, can you DOS this particular service? Uh, in this case, it's Akamai. I don't know if you're familiar with Akamai or not. <laughs> but trying to DOS Akamai, uh, I, I'm sure it's possible. But their DMZ is a service. Uh, it routes, right? So you could be attacking, I don't know, a few few hundred locations at the same time to DOS them is basically what it would amount to. They reroute, so it would be very difficult to do that with them. Smaller, smaller mom and pop type uh, situation, maybe not. To, to be honest with you, he's asking the question about a Google solution that uses trusted users. It's doing something similar. I, I don't know how it stacks up. I thank you for the question. Maybe after the talk, you and I can get together and I can get some more information on it. It's one of the reasons I do these talks is to gain information too. So. It probably isn't, except for this. When you start working with the um, the idea of in the reverse proxy, are you? I don't remember being able to always get it down to the URL level. I don't know that you can always do that. Yeah. There. I, I know that we have reversed proxies, 
And I have never had anybody come to me with a solution that would allow us to do that. And I've asked, believe me, in the past 16 years, this has been one of my pet peeves, is that we knock holes in the firewall. As I've uh, you know, managed the networks, managed pen test team, watched what we do, manage the SOC to see what we can follow and see what we can see. Uh, this is probably the number one thing when, when, uh, when I see us allowing thousands upon thousands of different systems to have access to certain things uh, with all the vendors and the different uh, customers and different work areas that we have. Uh, this is the number one thing that concerns me and I, I've seen attacks coming through, uh, even when we have, you know, I know it's a good individual, but, you know, maybe they got malware on their side. And because we allow them to do certain things to get in, uh, <laughs> the, the, uh, the ramifications of that, we've, we've faced those a few times. And this, I know, eliminates that. So... I'm not saying it doesn't work with reverse proxy. So we'll need to look into that a little bit more. Do you feel, what do you feel is still missing for somebody beyond that to be able to present this as a viable solution? You know, versus an in-house DMP where you own all the hardware suited to us, when you do a cloud solution, is there something you feel is still in that Well, the, the idea behind this is if you try to do it in-house, you, you've got this one entity, excuse me, you've got this one entity and that's you, right? And you're having to put out all this uh, effort to protect that, right? Now, what if you then put a entity in Azure or you then put another entity into uh, some other cloud service, right? With this, all I have to do is drop one of these connectors on the back side, and I'm protected. My perimeter, everybody's on the outside. You got to come through this central point, and then all these points are talking back. I just created a segmented, micro segmented network with this simplicity. And simplicity is what we want, right? Don't make it so complicated you can't figure it out. Okay? With that, I uh, really appreciate uh, everybody. No more questions? Thank you very kindly. <laughs>